This is the water knot, and this is used for joining together pieces of webbing or making a continuous loop out of a single piece of webbing, which is what we're going to do now. Take your piece of webbing, make sure to get all the twists out of it. We're going to put this one aside, and with one end, make a simple overhand knot. The same knot you use in the first step of tying your shoes most of the time. You'll notice that this piece of webbing, the two sides are different. One is marked with three white stripes, and the other has no white stripes. Those white stripes will help us make sure that we keep any twists out of our loop when we tie it. So, now taking the other piece of webbing, I'm going to take the side with no white stripes and made it to this side that also has no white stripes. And I'm going to feed it back through the knot, tracing it backwards. Make sure to pull enough slack around and then through. Cinch the knot down. If done properly, it should just look like a, a doubled up overhand knot. It's essentially two overhand knots tied on top of one another. The tails should always be long enough to fold over the knot on each side so that they don't slip through and the knot won't accidentally come undone. And if we did it properly, there shouldn't be any twists in our continuous loop. And indeed there are not. That's the water knot. Hello and welcome to my tutorial for this, the rose knot. Something that I came up with after trying to find something that didn't just look like a triangle. Let me show you how it's done. The first step is to pop your collar and get a tie, as with any tie knot. The next is to bring the tie so that the fat end rests at your waist. I don't think you can see that, but trust me, it's there. Then you want to put a dimple in it, like so, and you're ready to go. And this is because this tie is a little different, so much as you actually have to wrap around the thin end, as opposed to the, where'd it go, the fat end. Here. So you just saw the first move here, and that is to just bring it around like that. Then you want to move that thin end and pass it through the top while holding the dimple. That makes sure that it's that makes sure that it's nice and good. Then you end up with this triangle thing, and that is the base for the rest of the knot. So you want to pass the tie over that and then up. The second weird thing is that you actually have to then reopen that so that you can put your finger through it like that and then bring the tie through that. And that's what gives it the weaved look. Take the thin end that you just passed through here, as you can see, and bring it back down through the hole in the back. Now you're going to need to tighten this mess up, and the way you do that is that you pull down on the right side of the triangle, that brings in this here, and then you want to pull up on the top of the triangle, and that rings in that. You may need to do that a couple of times, but it's fairly quick. All right. Then you're left with that here, which looks good in its, in its own right, but unfortunately we have this hanging off and we can't just leave it here. So what we're going to do is open up a loop, do the same basic principle as before, and pass it through. This time we bring it straight down. Now you're left with something like that, with this hanging off the left side. Now we can't just leave it here because it's right in the way. So what we're going to do is instead of passing it down, is we're actually going to hide it inside our collar by hiding it behind the rest of the tie. Let's put it there and as you can see it holds itself fairly well. So if you happen to be moving a lot during the night, that's not going anywhere. So once you're like that, you're pretty much golden. You bring down 
the collar, and there you have the rose knot. Now to adjust this, you want to pull on the fat end, and that brings it up here. And most of the time you're going to be end ending up with something kind of like what I have here, where it's all wrinkly. Now one way you can get rid of that, or at least help get rid of some of it, is to get a headphone jack and just put it in there, and just slide it around trying to flatten it out. As you can see, it's just a little bit better. And another thing you can do is put your thumb on the back and support the knot on all three of its sides with your fingers and push forward and that plumps it up and that fleshes out any of the remaining bumps. Well, at least most of them. It's never going to be perfect, perfect, but you can get pretty darn close. So now you put it in your vest or just let it drape inside your jacket and there you go. That there is how you tie the rose knot. Thanks for watching.